Welcome back, co-cloud learners. Are you ready to dive into the latest and greatest from AWS? You know how fast the cloud native world and AWS moves, so staying up to date isn't just beneficial, it's essential for your career. In this video, we're gonna break down the key updates and game-changing features AWS has rolled out in September and October of 2024, and trust me, you wanna hear these highlights. So whether you're optimizing your infrastructure, scaling microservices, or just staying ahead in cloud innovation, these updates are gonna impact how you architect to operate and manage cloud solutions. So from enhanced EC2 monitoring capabilities to SageMaker Studio's new auto shutdown features, AWS is continually trying to make your life easier. They don't just want your money, they want your attention as well. But that's not all. AWS has also made big strides in securing EKS communications. They've upgraded the code pipeline experience and have a brand new flavor of memory DB service ready for you to discover. So are you ready to discover how these features can supercharge cloud projects? So grab a coffee, buckle up, and get yourself equipped with everything you need to stay ahead in the AWS ecosystem. And while you're here, remember to hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, so you never miss an update from CodeCloud. Let's jump right in. All right, everyone, welcome up. Tidbits with AWS, let's get into this. Okay, so I've got eight great tidbits for September and October, so we've combined the last eight or nine weeks. Do note that there are multiple sources at the bottom, seven weeks worth of sources, actually. So let's talk about number one. So number one is a key feature. First of all, now the EC2 status checks now support the elastic block storage attached volume. So if the volume's healthy, now you can get status checks just by hitting the EC2 endpoint. And basically it'll tell you whether or not your disks are good, right? This includes being reachable and being able to complete IO operations. It also detects any kind of attachment issues or volume impairments that are happening. And so you can get this as well. Number two, is that I just recently took the AWS certified AI practitioner exam. It is officially out of beta, right? Brand new certification. But this is something that a lot of people don't know is that this is a fundamental exam. It is 100 minutes. It is 65 questions. It is very doable. You do have to know a little bit more than you would know for cloud practitioner. But the main thing to know is that if you pass it before February 15th of next year, so 2025, you're gonna get an early adopter badge in addition to your certified AI practitioner badge. So I wouldn't say that out of the gate, this exam is going to basically, you know, increase your compensation, but it will signal that you have started your AI journey and will prepare you for either the machine learning associates or the data engineering associates. There's a little bit of roots of both in there, right? But mainly the machine learning one. So that's number two, is that we now have the AWS Certified Practitioner AI Foundational Exam and it's out of beta, ready to go. All right, number three, so tutorials. So secure communications in Elastic Kubernetes service. So this tutorial is actually gonna teach you how to use Amazon's Lattice, right? And the pod identity service both of which are relatively new features in the last 12 months with AWS to basically secure your cross EKS clusters like your application communications. So it's gonna come up with an example you can use as a reference for your own microservice applications. This is a cool little tutorial that's gonna show you how to deepen the encryption and the overlay network so that you can communicate better with EKS. Number four, a new feature. So if you are operationalizing or supporting machine learning engineers, right? You're probably using SageMaker Studio. You might be using Canvas, it just depends, right? But what's interesting is that if you do use Studio, you can actually set it and enable the automatic shutdown of any kind of instances or any applications that are using the SageMaker distribution image, like this version two or newer, right? And so it's gonna shut down idle apps that are just sitting there. And I will tell you that SageMaker Studio, if you leave an endpoint or some other application running, it can get very very expensive, very fast. So this is an incredible feature to have. You do not have to orchestrate it yourself. You can literally just turn it on and set the timeout and go to town. So number four, an amazing operational cost savings feature. Number five, Aurora Serverless version two, which is way better than version one, now supports 256, what they call Aurora capacity units. So remember, each Aurora capacity unit basically corresponds to a certain amount of memory, a certain amount of CPU, and a certain amount of networking. It was previously capped at 128 ACUs. So, you know, now you can get about half a terabyte of memory corresponding CPU networking that goes with that. So what they've effectively done is they've doubled the capacity limit on Aurora serverless version two, which is excellent news. 
Number six. So code pipeline, you know, in the wake of code commit being end of life next year and new accounts, of course, don't have access to code commit code pipeline is still the primary native orchestration service that AWS runs. And what's interesting is that they've added a whole new kind of getting started experience where you can create new pipelines, you know, get access to better templates, right? You know, for build automation. And so if we click into this to kind of take a look at this feature, What's interesting is that it basically allows you to choose from templates now. So now you've got a whole new set of starter templates basically for code pipeline. Okay, number seven. So this is a feature, this is console to code. Basically it allows you to generate infrastructure as code. So this is a way of being able to click into the management console and you basically get to prototype the creation of code, right? So you can actually now do what they call click ops, where you click, 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 and this generates infrastructure as code. And so you can generate code for your preferred console actions, right? So it's very cool. So if you click into this one, general availability. So if you're logged into your console, you can now basically see this generate infrastructure as code. This could be Terraform. This could be a lot of other things, actually. Open Tofu, which predominantly would look like Terraform. And last but not least, number eight is a new service, basically. So you may know that MemoryDB for Redis has existed for a minute. And of course, Redis has existed in ElastiCache, which is the caching service, right? Along with Memcache for quite some time. So as you may be aware, Redis has recently modified their license to make it a little less cloud friendly, a little less open source, kind of like HashiCorp did a little while ago. And so there's now this new Fort Redis clone called Valky. And so now MemoryDB now supports both Valky and Redis has OSS flavors for the database service. This is going to provide everything from the microsecond reads, the single digit write latency, the multi availability zone durability, and of course, extremely high throughput because this is a basically an in-memory database. And so Valky supports all the hashing, sorting, and complex you know, notions that Redis does. And so you're going to see a lot of progression here, especially since that license move was, was made. So there you have it, eight key features that are happening inside of AWS ranging from enhanced EC2 monitoring, now memory DB for Valky, and then a tutorial on using overlay networks to secure your enter EKS traffic. So lots of great things happening at AWS. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, leave comments down below if you want more of varied content. Otherwise, we will catch you in the updates for November.